so basically uh, what we got we, we will do today we will just go through the uh, coding best practices that is uh, stated in the pay page and uh, let's start with the indentation and what are the indentation best practices on the tab best practices so uh, in python 2 we could have uh, mixed the tabs and spaces right so that is not allowed in uh, python 3 so uh, when you run the code in Python 2, you can just add dash E option. It will show you a warning that the spaces and tabs are inconsistent. Like, like uh, usually, let's say there is a two uh, tabs should be there, four spaces, and there is a tab you entered and you wrote a function. So this will show you a warning that if this code uh, won't translate well to Python 3, Oh, and, and this is not a pay paid consistent coding style. And if you type uh, add the dash dp, it will basically give you an error. Uh, so it won't run. So what are the do's and don'ts of this? So basically, uh, this is a do. When you write a long function and there are multiple parameters as well, uh, keep the spaces like this so they are aligned with the variable. Uh, so it is more readable that way. So this is another example. More indentation is included in distinguished from the test. So uh, let's say you can do this also. So this is also an valid one. This is also an valid one. So you can like add. So all the parameters should be aligned. So what are the don'ts? So what you uh, should not do. So you should not do like this. So it is not aligned. So it is not like very readable. So you don't uh, should not do this, uh, and you should not do this either. Okay. So everything should be a, a aligned to some extent, so we can easily distinguish. So what uh, it did here, it is like aligning with one tab, and then it is writing, uh, sorry, uh, two tabs. Then it is writing the print statement with one tab. So we can easily distinguish which are the parameters that is being passed in the function, and where does the actual code word is passed. So here we cannot easily distinguish where the code word is passed. So this is not a good thing to do. So for operations for binary operations, uh, what are the do's basically? So uh, this is a good uh, thing we can add. So this is something we can do. Uh, so based on the uh, priority of the operation, you can group them together. Okay. So this is where grouping x into x together. We are grouping y into y together. But we should not uh, do like something like this. So this is not very readable. So x. So you do you you separated the division. But you also, uh, sorry, separated the addition, but also separated uh, the multiplication. So this is you should not something something you should not do. You uh, something. So this is directly suggestion from the pay page. So you should write binary operations like this, not like this one. So same thing uh, here. So this is something you uh, so for the return statement. So uh, the equal to that you can do. Yeah, uh, just don't add unnecessary spaces. So it is hard to read. So this is a do, and this is a don't. So I added example for every single uh, use case. Okay. So maximum character and line length. So 79 characters. Uh, a maximum of 79 characters is the recommendation in Petal. And uh, so comments should be limited to the 72 characters. So if there is needed, you can add line breaks. So uh, let's say this one. So you, I added line breaks. So this this should this is a do. So whenever uh, you need to add something, you can all you guys already know that you can add a slash and and break it. So if the uh, slash is, doesn't look good for you, you can just add a parenthesis. So that works also. So for imports, 
that is the same thing. If you have a long set of imports, you can add just add a parenthesis. That is the pipette standard, and uh, uh, don't uh, group them so don't they don't exceed the 79 characters limit. So this is also a thing for binary operations. You can do this. So either you can add the parenthesis or you can add a line break using the slash. So uh, let's say uh, you are like, what is the right way of uh, dividing the binary operations? Let's say you are like uh, grouping them with the bracket, but still, what is the right way? Do I need to? Should I write the binary operators in the right side or left side? So as you can see, we have to like like dart our eyes in the code to get a feel of it. So where the plus and minus is. So even if I like do this, based on the length of the character, uh, it is quite hard to read. So we can usually do uh, usually do this. So all the binary operators are like this, and so you can easily distinguish which one. Uh, on the so these so plus this plus this plus this minus this minus this you can easily uh, see whatever is happening. So for the uh, let's say in so writing something. Uh, let's say we're defining a Django model, right? So I, what I like to do, and what is recommended in Pepe also, see, we don't do this. So usually, what people do, na, people just like type like this. So equal to immediately after that. So it re becomes hard to read. So I add a consistent number of spaces or tabs. Uh, between the equal to and the all the parameters, so all the fields, so whatever the fields are, they are separated with evenly manner. So it is much more readable. Then. Okay, so uh, in classes, the class name should start with capital. Uh, so, uh, so to start with capital, and each of the other. Words that you are including in your class should also be also start with capital. So, around the top level function, class definition with two blank lines. So, let's say big, this is a class and this is another class. So, there, there should be two blank lines in between. So, one and the method definitions that are inside the class should be divided surrounded by a single blank line. So, after this method one, there is a single blank line and there is a method two. So for imports, I already talked about uh, some of them, but import should be like this. I know we like to do import like this, but this is the pep eight recommended import type. So if you need imports, do them on separate lines. So different so different type of imports like OS and Sys are different libraries. So don't do like this. So even if it looks convenient to do so, this is not recommended in Pepic. So do like this. And from like, it is okay to do this, right? So they are grouped for the same thing. So sub process, we are importing uh, from, uh, from sub process C open and pipe. So this is fine because they are relating to the same package, but different packages that do not, uh, Relate to each other should not be imported in the same in the same way. So two can separate. So for relative imports, uh, I know this is a very really, uh, convenient thing to do. Relative imports, but don't do this uh, as much as you can. Don't do this uh, to the so from the source package. So the whole hierarchy is seeable in when somebody reads something. So you don't have to dart around. Code folder structure to understand whatever is written, and uh, when to use tailing commas. So this, so this is a fine way uh, to add tailing commas. So fine, I am doing like this. So this is a good place to add tailing commas. This is fine. So even if it is no no other element after this, it is fine to add tailing commas here. But here it is not fine to add tailing commas. Because it is a single line, so there is no uh, 
uh, need to add a uh, telling commas so don't do this remove telling commas from here so this is uh, another thing that is mentioned in step 8 so class name so class name should normally use cap word convention that i already talked about so naming convention for function may be used so for function uh, so class name should look like this and separated by two uh blank lines that i already told about and uh, from method so the method should be separate uh, should be written like uh, all small cases with an underscore in between the words that you need to create a function and a single line of space after that Sorry. and for private method uh, you guys already know this but still this is separate recommended use an underscore and from instance variable do the same thing okay so an underscore uh, and then the instance variable name and some value so that is uh, recommended to use two underscores in some cases why because let's say you are inheriting for something so you are inheriting from some base class you are inheriting from some base class and it has some instance variable let's say some name so some instance variable so it's better to add underscore underscore in some cases that way the instance variable that are only underscore uh, uh, initiated so some instance variable that is in base class is only one underscore some instance variable that is not overwritten by this so in some rare cases when you're inheriting for something I add you can add two underscores in a private method. Okay, so constants you already know. Uh, constants need to have you can write in all caps with underscore in between the words. This is the only way you should write constants. For exceptions, uh, uh, even if you write your custom exception, whatever the exception is, so start with the capital. Uh, and uh, there should be always error after that so io error value error so this should be so names to avoid never use lowercase i uh, so lowercase l or uppercase o or uppercase letter i in a single character variable name. so so don't use this because in some formats in some fonts it is very hard to read so always try to avoid these type of things so package and module name so all module should not have uh, should have short and all lowercase names so all modules that you like to find you were creating some module so they all should have a uh, lowercase name with underscores in between uh, okay so uh, all lowercase names so even if it is uh, like a long name then you can add underscores otherwise it is spirit. so this is the whole pip 8 format you can go on and read the whole pip 8 uh, style in directly from python okay so it is not a long read basically there is uh, designing inheritance and whatnot it will all is explained here so tabs and spaces what are the pet fields that you need to do and there is another thing that you guys should look into that is a slate eight so what is like it basically this uh checks whether your code is uh pet eight compatible or not so just install uh i think i let's, let's open a new window Yeah, it is already installed so let's try to write something and uh, check if it is uh, matches with our code standard or not so let's go back and let's do this copy this and
Okay. So let's first try to run it and if there is some indentation issue. Okay, it is running. So Python dash M lake eight now check. So it is giving whatever the issue is, okay. So blank line contains white space. So blank line contains white space. So basically I am not doing everything right here according to page standards. So I'm adding passes, right? So I'm adding passes. So it it is not liking it. So you can write your code and you can verify. So it doesn't need to make every single sense. So uh, if I run on a large set of code, let's say uh, I think I have another file open somewhere. So if I go on an active project and since we write the code, we don't necessarily always check if it is separate compatible. So click Python M. It is given that these, the, so whatever, what line the error is, and uh, that's it. Here is a that I told talked about the uh, function or whatever I am passing. It is 84 characters. It needs to be 79 characters. Then missing white space after there is a comma and uh, blank line is found. So you can usually ignore this blank line thing. This is trivial because uh, the format that I talked about uh, two blank spaces should be after a class and one blank line should be after a method. So you can correct all these things with play case. This is a really good tool. So that is one thing. And uh, so you can have this uh, uh, Jupyter Notebook. You can go to this documentation or you can directly go to PayPage guide. I can read through all these things. Okay? So it is better to follow the PayPage convention. So, so the next person who reads your code, so they have a, a standard way that they can understand. So nothing like gibberish or spaghetti code is not, is not generated. Oh, okay. So anything, anybody have any questions regarding? Hello. Yeah, you are audible. Uh, no, Shant, no, I don't. Have. Okay, cool. So, uh, if then anybody doesn't have any questions, so we can conclude it. So, I prepared basically this. You can basically go over in paper so and get all the information. And uh, remember the play gate tool that I talked about. You can easily identify whatever each and line and which character doesn't match your coding standard of the paper. Sure, sure. Okay, Priya. So I think uh, nobody has any questions. So if it if it is done, we can conclude it. Uh, basically, this was a it took us thirty minutes, so we went over it pretty quickly. Uh, so there is some time if anybody has any questions. So if anybody doesn't have any questions, we can conclude. Priya, are you there? Hello, Pia? Yeah. I think Pia is having some technical issues. So this file will be shared with you guys. Sure, sure.
Hello, Pia. I think it's not there. Ah, uh, I think she is not there. So, could I stop the recording or can I do that? Sure. Yes, sure. Yeah, sure.